Hey everyone, and welcome back to the 30 Day Profit Challenge. I'm your host, Blair DeYoung. Now today, it's day eight of the 30 Day Profit Challenge, and I'm recording this lesson because admittedly, had a little bit of a frog in my throat this morning when I tried to get up and record this. So I'm re-recording this just for you and sending it to you. So thank you for your patience. Appreciate you being here and appreciate you watching this lesson with me. And I just want to honor you for being here. You know, we've gone through seven days now for a whole week of getting up every morning at 7.30 to come online and do a video for you. So I appreciate those of you that have been making it and showing up every single day. I know it's been difficult maybe with the holidays or the, or the circumstances of the world going on right now. But for those of you that are showing up, I really appreciate it. I really thank you for showing up live to these events. But I also appreciate the people that are watching this recording. So thank you for being here and thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. So from here, today what we're going to tie into is we're going to start talking about the order margin tree. And order margin tree is the second of the four elements that we talk about when we talk about the profit litmus test. So let's dive into it. Just get the screen share going here. All right, so day eight, the order margin tree. Now, for those of you who haven't tuned in yet and, and looked at the product margin tree, please do go back and watch the videos. The recordings are now available and you should be able to go see those videos. Days three, four, five, and six, those are all gonna, and even seven are gonna take you through the, what we call the product margin tree, where we cap it off with the total product margin formula. So today, we're getting into the second thing, order margin tree. And so for those of you who, who've been with us so far, but for those of you who maybe haven't, we're just going to recap the profit litmus test for you, just so that you can be familiar with the framework that I use when I'm trying to understand profit for an e-commerce business. So the first element that we talk a bit about is what we call the product margin tree. Now what the product margin tree is, again, this is anything related to the price of your products, to the cost of your products of goods sold. Uh, it could be related to the amount of unit quantities or order values. Anything that's related to just the velocity of products going through the pipeline of your business. And so we use the product margin tree as a way to kind of gauge how much you're making on a per product basis or how much are you making on your unit sold. So that from there, we can arrive at what we call the total product margin formula. And that total product margin formula helps you calculate how much product margin or often referred to as your gross margin or your retail margin on your product sold. The second element we're gonna get into is what we call the order margin. Now the order margin is something that's a little bit different and with the order mark, but it is related. And so what the order margin looks at is it takes into account things like the cost of just doing business for your orders. So things like your payment processing, things like your pick and pack and shipping costs, things like your returns or your discounts, or perhaps even what it costs you to run your e-commerce platform to maintain the business day to day. So those are all costs that we look at in the order margin formula. The other part of it is we look at the customer margin formula or the customer margin tree. And in that case, what the customer margin tree is, is it basically looks at all of the elements that were related to your customers. So how you acquire your customers or what it costs you to, to advertise or maybe what it costs you to give incentives or special promotions or special perks to those customers to stay with you from a loyalty perspective. The customer margin again is looking at everything to do with getting customers in the door and then from finally, we look at your conversion margin. And what your conversion margin is would be basically where, if you think about it, there's all these potential people out in the world that you could possibly sell to and come and buy from you. And so with the conversion margin formula, it looks at all of those people and what the potential opportunity is, is we take it through what we call a funnel in marketing. And so that funnel would be starting at the top of everyone possible that you can sell to, through to people that visit your website, to people that look at a product, to people that add it to the cart, and then buy it and check out. And over time, what you want to do is obviously make that funnel grow wider and wider and wider so that you can have more people flowing through your funnel and more uh, orders and more customers. So today, as we talked a bit about, I'm going to introduce you to the order margin formula or the order margin tree. And what the order margin tree is, is it basically looks at all of those elements that are related to, again, to your orders and anything that's tied to a variable related to the order. So if we think back to when we did the product margin tree, we had this example scenario on the right hand, left hand side for you um, 
right hand, left hand for me, maybe right hand as you as you're watching this, depending on else I got it painted today. Okay, left, great. So on the left hand side for you, so let's take an example order where you've got the list price of some product that sold at $120. Now, if we take that list price and we discount it by $20, let's say, the actual product revenue that you would generate on that order would be $100. And that would be $100 straight to your, what we would call your top line, okay? Now, what we've also got to account for is things like taxes. So if you live in Canada, province of Alberta, or like me, or if you live in the States, some states are now you know, making you pay for pay or charge taxes on orders. So depending on where your jurisdiction is, there may be taxes that you have to charge. And then from there, you've got shipping charges. Now, whether you charge for it or you make people pay for it or not, but let's assume in this scenario, you are charging for shipping. And that, so what you would do is you would total up your $100 in product revenue, add up your taxes, your shipping and handling, gives you a gross revenue number of $114.95. And so these numbers are important because as we work our way through the order margin tree, we're now gonna look at both the gross revenue and the product revenue so that we can help those understand how some of these numbers work. So let's get through the, the order margin tree now. So the first thing we wanna account for, like I said, is we wanna look at the gross sales revenue as well as the product sales revenue. So we've kind of relabeled those a little bit just so that we can make the delineation between gross being basically what you're charging to the customer and then the product sales revenue is actually what you're taking in on the individual products so that we can delineate between the two again. So gross sales revenue is what you're charging to the customer. Product sales revenue is what you're actually collecting on the actual product sales itself. Make sense? Cool. So now we're also gonna look at your orders and bring those into the equation because we need to use your orders to understand some of your payment processing charges, as well as some of the charges may be linked up to just the sheer volume or velocity of orders or shipments that you're shipping out in a given day, week or month or year. So from there, what we've got along the right hand side then is we're gonna look at all of the different the elements that make up your order margin tree. And we're gonna start with your e-commerce platform and what it costs you to run your platform. So that's everything from the shopping cart to maybe the order management system or to your warehouse and fulfillment systems or perhaps your sales and marketing tools or CRMs or any of those other tools and technology. We wanna include that in here because without those tools, you wouldn't be able to generate orders. You wouldn't be able to take the orders in the first place, let alone you wouldn't be able to sell the customers or market to them to drive in the orders themselves. So we can lump those into the order margin tree, but we'll talk about how to optimize some of those tools or those, those techniques in some of the conversion and even the customer margin examples further down in this challenge. Then what we've got is your pick, pack, and ship costs. So again, whether you're charging it to the customer or not, you have someone has to pay somewhere along the lines to pick the product, pack it in a box, and then ship it out the door. And so in that scenario, we'll look at the costs involved with pick, pack, and ship. And then finally, what we've got is we've got the payment processing. I shouldn't say finally, because there are a few more, but with payment processing, this is where we now start taking into account both the gross sales revenue. And in that case, typically it's, usually as uh, dollars that are captured as a percentage of all the revenue. And then you've got your orders. And those orders are typically as a factor of the number of orders on a per order basis. And I realize the labels are correct, incorrect here, so I'll make sure I fix that for after the recording for you for the distribution of the PowerPoint. But think of when we get into that lesson, we'll talk a bit about how payment processing works because once you get your head wrapped around it and understand how it works, even a few little basis points can make a world of difference for you in your payment processing charges. And it's probably one of the biggest costs that you have to doing business in e-commerce this day and age. We'll look at returns as well. So whether or not you offer returns or exchanges, how can you basically optimize the returns percentage or the number of people that are returning their products back to you? Perhaps there's ways that you can offer them exchange instead of a return. Or perhaps there's certain products you don't return. It's a final sale. Or perhaps if you do a return, Maybe there's an opportunity to offer the customer, you know, a solution to maybe they return part of the product or they return the product, but give them something back in return to come back and buy something else instead. So with that, there's returns. Finally, we've got discounts. And what discounts are, are basically, you know, some people offer them, some people don't. I have a bit of a personal philosophy and belief on when I use, when I buy products from people with them without a discount. So we'll get into that and how perhaps you can help improve your margins there. And then finally, any other miscellaneous order variable costs, anything else that we find, maybe part of that would, would add into the order margin tree. So we'll sprinkle in some of those as we move throughout the process. So from there, what we'll be able to do is again, taking your basic formula of profit, we're gonna be able to take your sales revenue, 
subtracted from the that your order costs to arrive at your total margin order margin and so that in a nutshell is the order margin tree and so we're going to use this tree throughout the coming lessons to help us understand how do we make more margin out of our order margin tree and optimize it further so next lesson we're going to dive into the e-commerce platform and what the e-commerce platform charges are would be anything again related to your shopping cart related to order fulfillment related to sales and marketing any of those tools and technologies that you're using to drive sales into your business. So with that, I thank you for being here today. Again, day eight of this 30 day profit challenge. I really appreciate you being patient with me and listening to the recording. So thank you again. And again, I ask you to be present today, connect with others. And if you get a chance, try to make an impact in someone else's life with that. Thanks for watching and have a great day.